Welcome to another video on my channel. My name is George Schlackig. What a difference just a day makes. Yesterday at this time, you wouldn't have heard me on this camera because the wind was so aggressive, so extreme, that even just riding the bike wasn't really that pleasant. Of course, there's always a direction with the wind when you're just reaching amazing speeds and stuff but overall there's still a chill in the air well it's june now it's in edmonton they call it bike month and i'm gonna say that to me there doesn't need to be a, a month for the bike but i guess for some people it's a good reminder that the bike is a good way to get around is a good way to get your exercises the most amazing invention that's been made ever. That's my opinion. I, you could argue with that. Do it in the comment section. It's always interesting to hear your opinions about it. When I wrote my book, it's called Destinations Are Fake. And this time I'll leave a link in the description because it is still available. I've written it, like, what is it now? We are in 20... Yeah, about eight years ago. I'm, I'm due for maybe another one, but you know, to be honest with you, this uh, YouTube channel in the last like four years or so, it's kept me super busy. And when you look at the results, it is really not a, a good return. I got sidetracked. I was talking about my book because in that book, I mentioned that a bicycle, in my mind, is the greatest invention ever. And the reason I say that is because look at what other modes of transportation we have and uh, what other mode of transportation doesn't require you to have any other source of power than what you got in your muscles, in your heart. This, uh, the bicycle allows you, even on a flat surface with no wind, you can easily work up to say 20 kilometers an hour which is about 12 miles or so uh, and it is not that hard to do now try that when you're running or try that with like basically anything that you could think of that doesn't have a motor and that's going to get a lot harder to do than it is with the bicycle so quite honestly i believe that bicycles are a miracle and there's so much more to this. Have you ever been depressed? I think most of us have been depressed at some point in their life. And like years and years and years ago, I discovered that the best remedy for depression that, that I've ever found, I mean, the best remedy for depression, it's a long bike ride. If that hasn't worked for you, then maybe you've never tried it, but on the other hand, it also takes a certain level of fitness to really start enjoying these bike rides. But once you commit to it, just for even just a temporary period, then you work up relatively fast to a level that allows you to do that. You know, you, you don't have to go do the Olympics every day. You can grab your bike, go for a 10K ride or something like that. And then before you know it, if you do that maybe twice a week, three times a week, before you know it, you get the feeling that when you get back to your destination or your house or whatever, you're going to feel like, hey, it's over already. I should just turn around and do some more. That's how fun it will become. And sometimes I think the bicycle industry actually works against that because now you have the pressure. You have to have a certain bike. What kind of riding do you do? Like, is general riding not legit? Can't you just grab your bike, go on the road, go on a trail, just have fun? 
What kind of riding? Riding is enough. Just riding your bike any way you please at your own pace. That's where the key is. And then, well, if you have the opportunity to take your bike and commute to your job or commute to whatever other activities you have in your life, if you have that possibility, say the infrastructure is good, the climate's okay. Like right now in Edmonton, the season is finally getting better. We've had a late spring this year. I don't know, there was a lot of weather where it wasn't really that comfortable riding. Like when it wasn't windy, then it was raining. When it wasn't raining, then there was something else, you know. I mean, I'm not saying there were no good days, but you know, I haven't ridden this road bike much. But now I'm on a Saturday morning here, enjoying this so much, you know, and I'm wondering like, yeah. I mean, I don't like to get this thing dirty, there's that, but the ride itself, this is worth living for, guys. This is, if you have nothing else to live for in your life, and there are a lot of people like that these days. I mean, how many people suffer from, uh, are battling severe drug addictions and stuff? I bet you there's a way of riding your bike that uh, you could probably eliminate a good part of that. I'm not saying all of it because I don't know everybody's story and I know that some some people really have severe trauma in their life and, and that uh, changes the ball game, of course. But these treatment programs were, it's meant to help people get off their addictions and find something else in their life. I bet you if they introduced cycling longer distances as a kind of a staple in their programs, it would probably make a difference. And I'm not saying it's going to work for everybody. Obviously, no, it probably not. But cycling like that is a miracle. Problem here is sometimes, you know, the infrastructure that we have for cycling, oftentimes you have to share the road with motorized traffic and that's kind of dangerous and that turns off a lot of people right there. So yeah, leave me your comment. Do you think cycling is a little bit of a cure anything or do you think it's just another activity where you could have maybe a, a dozen other things that work as good or better? My opinion, cycling beats them all and anything you can have with the battery in it, well, you're really taking away from the exercise that you're trying to get. That's that's just me. I know there are a lot of people advocating for electric bikes and that, and I'm not gonna try and talk you out of it, but I mean, anyone who's really in love with riding the bike probably won't ride their e-bike that much. That's all I'm gonna say. So leave me a comment, maybe give me a thumbs up for this video. I'm gonna slowly find my way home now on the bike. It's a beautiful sunny day. I'm actually getting hot here, working up a sweat. That is fine. This is not a windbreaker. So in the wind, it's actually even under the hoodie, I'm still cooling off a little bit. And yeah, if you want more videos to see, I got a huge channel in that regard, small channel in regards to audience so thank you for being here and thank you for checking out some of my other stuff i have to admit that i'm i've never grown a big channel or anything but that doesn't say that it's not worth it youtube is something i've grown to love and whenever i do something like whether it be repairs whether it be fixing the bike whether it be like just about anything, even for my professional stuff, you know, I don't know everything when it comes to handyman work. I often go to YouTube and watch somebody else's video. You have to be careful though. Sometimes people don't do it the right way. Sometimes people say they got in a way with doing it by cutting corners and stuff. And you kind of have to read through that. And it takes a little bit of experience to, uh, to do that successfully i won't say all the time but most of the time at least so but you know thanks to youtube there's a lot of stuff that 
you can now do completely yourself that uh, in the past maybe you would have hired somebody for. Uh, yeah, you've been waiting for it. I have to mention my truck again. I'm fixing an old pickup truck, doing it all by myself. And that in the past, it was easier to do on most vehicles. That's why I got a, a really old one, a really old truck. So it's easy to work on still. But if you were to buy a vehicle that was built in, uh, say, uh, 2020 or something like that, you would probably not take the same approach. You know, back in the day, I used to get the manual for whatever car I would have and then just go by that, you know, but there was no internet. There's still a place for shop manuals, obviously, but they're not as necessary as they've been in the past. You know, there are tons of videos that are very, very good on YouTube. And well, my channel pretty much is about doing it yourself. And uh, I told you in my last video that I've been fixing my bike by myself. I'm going to show you in another video that's coming up shortly how I overhauled my throttle body for the truck and all of these things. And I hope, you know, by this YouTube sharing network, there's always somebody somewhere who will benefit in some way. And that's for me kind of why I I haven't given up on YouTube. Of course, there are videos too that are meant solely for entertainment. And yeah, I got stuff recorded already that's about my truck. Uh, it's just a lot of work to edit and it's gonna come out. Hopefully it'll help somebody. If not, well, it's entertaining too, isn't it? I'll see you in the next video.